Okay, we're going to talk about the microscope and how to use it. First, you have to know the parts of it. So up here, the eyepieces are referred to as your ocular lenses. This is your nose piece. That's holding the objective lenses. Depending on the microscope you have, there may be three. Mine has four objective lenses, and this does move and rotate around. So sometimes they'll be referred to as a revolving or a rotating nose piece. And like I said, then these are your individual objective lenses. This is your stage. There's a clip here that's going to hold your slide sample in place. So when you take a slide, that clip just helps to hold it in place. On a lot of them, it just varies on the brand as to which side it will be on, but there will be these knobs over here. If you turn, there's two different knobs. The bottom one here, that's going to move the uh, clamp holding the slide in place, left to right, and then front to back. That way you don't have to be with your hand moving the, the uh, slide around. It helps. The clips hold the slide nice and secure, and then this will move it so you can position it how you want it. Your light source is down here. Uh, depending on the scope, once again, the light switch may be on the, the front, may be on the back. So you can see you have a light source here. The light is going to be shining up. You can use these knobs to help position your sample so the light is coming right up through. It's right centered over the light. Under here you also have your condenser that's going to help focus the light up. And then there are some knobs here. That's the iris. I don't know if you can tell. It's going to adjust the amount of light also that's coming up. Kind of like a shutter if you're into photography. Now this is the base. And this is the arm. Whenever you move a microscope, you need to always use two hands. You need to have one hand on the arm and the other one under the base and carry it like this because they are heavy and they're expensive. You do not want to drop it. <coughs> to focus, you have the knobs back here that are your adjustment knobs. The larger one is going to be your coarse adjustment and the inner smaller one is your fine adjustment. So the way you would observe a specimen, well first before that, when you get a scope, it should have been uh, stored with the light intensity all the way down low because oftentimes, once again, depending on the brand, you will be able to adjust the amount of light that comes up. So it should be stored on low so that when you turn it off, and the next person comes along, turns on the microscope, you don't blow the bulb. So light intensity should be on low. The mechanical stage should be all the way down. The lowest or the shortest objective lens should be in place. All of this is to help prevent uh, breakage while it's in storage. So now that you have your sample in, what I recommend that you do is now, with the course adjustment knob, Bring the stage all the way up. Now, some people will tell you to start with the, at the bottom and start looking through. I find, you know what, we're impatient. And if you do that, you're bringing this, the stage up and you're looking, and typically what happens is you're going, I can't see anything, I can't see anything. Well, you didn't bring it up high enough. And so there's less distance to go. For, your working distance is the space between the objective lens and the slide. And so there's less distance to move that stage. If you start with it all the way up, it's just going to be easier. So you've got your slide in place. The light is on. Always start with the lowest objective. That's the shortest one. Most microscopes, that's going to be a 4x objective. Your field of view is going to be relatively large. As you increase magnification, as you increase to those in increasing objective lenses, your field of view, what you're seeing through here is going to get smaller and smaller. So you always want to start with the lowest objective which has the largest uh, field of view. You're able to scan more area at once. So you're going to put your sample in there. Now, if you wear glasses, you can keep them on or take them off just depending on what works best for you. Use your course objective to move down 
until you see something. And you may have to move the slide just a little bit. Oftentimes, one of the eyepieces will have a pointer in it, which is real helpful when you're teaching or working with someone else to be able to say, hey, look at what I found. What is it? Well, look right at the end of the pointer. So I have my sample in here now. I use the coarse adjustment to get it in focus. Now I use the fine adjustment to just get it in that really nice, crisp, clear focus. Now, when you're using a microscope, especially when you're first learning, one big mistake is people want to just kind of really put their eyes right against it. And then they're like, what are those little black fluttery things? Those are your eyelashes. Back away a little bit. So I have it in focus. Microscopes are built with what we call that they are uh, parafocal. What that means is, I don't, don't move the stage. When you move to the next objective lens, you should still see what you saw in here before. It may not be in clear focus. It might be a little bit out of focus, but it should be there. From this point on, all you use is the fine focus because you're getting pretty close to that slide there. So just adjust. There we go. I have it in nice focus now. Once again, don't move the stage. People tend to want to do that when they first learn to use a microscope and you're just making a whole lot more work than you have to. Switch to the next objective lens. Once again, you should find focus only and you should be able to see your sample in here. If you lose it for some reason, you're like, oh, I can't see anything, go back to the original one and just get it back and focus again. Using, once again, just your fine uh, focus on that. When you are done, once again, store with the lowest objective lens in place. Move that stage all the way down. Don't forget to remove your slide and put it back. Either if it's one you made, either dispose of it or put it in storage, depending on the circumstances. Turn that light intensity all the way down. Turn your light off and now clean the stuff. Clean the eye uh, piece with the ocular lenses, clean the stage, clean your objective lenses. If you have to use the oil immersion, which you often have to in order to see bacteria, that requires you to add oil to be able to really focus the light up. You only use that with the oil immersion lens and you must make sure to clean that lens off extremely well and you don't want that oil to get on any of the other objective lenses because it will actually damage them if it gets on so you need to be careful when you're working with the oil so that's just a very general summary of how to use the microscope it takes practice like anything else what magnification are you looking at well here's how we figure out our magnification on the microscope <coughs> that we were just using. As I said, we had four objective lenses, and this is a typical magnification that you would have on objective lenses where there are four. Is that there one, the shortest one that we started with was a 4x, then there was a 10x, a 40x, and a 100x. The 100x was the oil immersion one. The ocular lens, that is a 10x. You can always look on them and there will be a number with the X after it. That's the magnification. To be honest with you, most microscopes, the ocular lens will be 10X. I personally have never worked with one that was not, but still you can just check it. So how do you calculate the total magnification of what the samples that you're looking at? How much did you magnify that? TM stands for total magnification. And to calculate that, all you do is multiply the objective lens that you're looking through times the ocular lens. So in this case, you would go four times 10, and that would be 40X, meaning you magnified it 40 times. Do that for the, all of them. If you're using the 10X, 10 times 10, it's 100. 
the 40 would be 40 times 10, so it would be 400. And then the Euler Merchant Lens, the 100x times 10 is 1,000. 1,000 times is as high magnification that you can get with a light microscope. If you want to go higher than that, then you're going to have to start looking at basically more expensive scopes, certainly like your electron microscopes. Um, so for most labs, this is going to be sufficient for what most like medical labs will be doing. So that's how you would figure out the total magnification. Now there's another calculation that we often ask you to figure out. And that is going to be the field diameter. What that is looking or asking you for, if we erase this part, the field diameter is when you are looking through the microscope and that's what you're seeing, what is the distance of the diameter? What's the distance across here? How much is that? So the field diameter, which I'm going to abbreviate here as FD, that is field diameter. How do you calculate that? Well, you take a ruler and you can actually measure it. Usually we do this with the 4X. Why? Because that's the largest field of view. It's the easiest way to do it. So you literally put a ruler and you look through the eyepiece, through that ocular lens, and you count the spaces from one end to the other in that field of view. I can tell you, uh, from experience, usually it's between 4.5 and 5 millimeters. So we're going to say that it's 5 millimeters in distance. Do you have to measure at all four oculars? No, you don't. There is a formula that you can use to calculate the other measurements. How do you do that? Well, if I want to know what the field diameter is for the 10x, I multiply what I know. I have a, the 4x. I multiply that by the five millimeters, which I measured, that's how I got that number. And then I'm going to divide by the objective lens for the one that I'm trying to calculate it for, in this case, the 10x. So this equation, four times five is 20, divided by 10, which is gonna be two. Two millimeters. So you see that that distance, as we increase the magnification, the field diameter is going to decrease. We're just saying that area of view that we're just looking through the microscope, it's getting smaller and smaller. So you can go ahead and do the calculations for the rest of these. Once again, this would be 20, now divide it by 40, and that is going to give you 0.5 and then 20 divided by 100 is going to give you 0.2. mm is just the measurement, millimeters. So that is how you would figure out the field diameter. Why do you want to know what the field diameter is? That is so you can calculate the cell size. To calculate cell size, What we need here, you're going to have to know your field diameter, which means you're going to have to know your total magnifications. I'm going to leave this up for just a minute. Cell size. No? We'll use a different color, that one won't work. Cell size. The formula for this is you take the field diameter and you divide it by the number of cells that would fit across the diameter. So if you are looking through the microscope, there's your field of view, that's what you're seeing. And so let's say you see a cell here and you see a cell here. Now, 
field diameter, what you're going to have to use is at the magnification that we're requesting you to look at. So if I were to ask you, let's just say starting off, we'll do the easy one. If I said, okay, at a 4x magnification, so this is, and they may either tell you 4x meaning the objective lens, or they may specify the total magnification. Make sure you read what it's saying. So with this 4x, total magnification would be 40. I told you here that the field diameter is five. If I asked you, this is what you see, how big are each of those cells? How big is an individual cell? So you would take the field diameter, which is five millimeters, you divide that by not the number of cells that you see here, but how many would you estimate to go across the diameter here? So if we just try to make this easy, and let's just say, oh, okay, if we line the cells up here in a row, let's say there'd be five cells. <coughs> Excuse me. So now five divided by five is one. So the size of each individual cell is one millimeter per cell. That's how big one cell is. Now the importance of looking at the instructions and determining make, or the correct answer, look at what magnification. That was at the 4x. Now, if we were to say instead, with the 100x, how would I determine if this is what I saw now? And for the 100x, what size are those cells? Well, now you would take the field diameter for the 100x, not the 4x, because that's not the one I'm asking for. I'm asking for the, the 100. So you would say 0 0.2 millimeters. You divide it by the number of cells that you would estimate would fit across, once again, 5. I'm used to always putting my units in to keep you straight, so that's why I'm putting the millimeters in the cells there. So now you do the math. You go 0 0.2 divided by 5, and that answer is going to be 0 0.04 millimeter per cell. So depending on the field diameter that you're looking at, you can see cells come in all different shapes and sizes. But how do you figure out the size? You use this formula. Field diameter divided by the number of cells that you estimate would fit across that diameter.